Uh, now that we finished up the wiring on uh, Corey's 23 Sea Craft, we're getting ready to send the boat over to, to Dave at Coastal Marine. Uh, they're in the district right here, they're only a street away. And Jared's on his way over to pick the boat up, and we can't wait to get it back after we get the motors on it and see how it's, this boat runs. Hey guys, Jared Helms here, rigger over at Coastal Marine in Stewart. We've been working with Mike over at Wildfire on the Seacraft project. He gave us a call, told us it was ready to be picked up, so we, luckily he's right around the corner. We ran over there and picked it up from him and got it back over here to get started on doing the rigging. So essentially once we got the boat, the harness had already been ran. Dave has been working with Mike and Corey on the layout of the dash, so I knew where everything was going. So it was all I had to do is make my measurements and drill my holes. The way Debbie lays out the wiring in the boat, it really makes things easy for us in rigging the dash. She left us plenty of room for mounting the control modules and key switches and everything else. So once the, once the console's rigged, the engines are ready to go on the back of the boat. Dave came out, he helped me hang the engines. It's kind of a two-man job with the forklift. I normally have a hoist system that I use, but with the height of the transom, it was, uh, it was going to require the forklift to do. Engine height is very important. You know, you don't want the engines too low where you're creating a big spray coming off of them. And you don't want them too high where you get a lot of cavitation. Magical broomstick is telling us that it may be a little low right there. I think we need to come up. A little low? Too low. When, when we do that with the straight edge or the calibrated broomstick, we'll try to sort of split the water intakes off the bottom of the boat. As the water is exiting the bottom of the boat, it's rising. So that's kind of the main reason why the engine has to be up higher. Come and touch the engine with it. That should be pretty good with that gear yeah. case. That's usually good for being super close, maybe having to come up or down a hole. Those actually like to be a little bit lower, to, to bite a little bit better. They've got a lot of torque for a, a four stroke. They're a really good running engine. On the mounting hardware, I like to use 4000 to seal up to keep any leaks through transoms. Um, the Seacraft had a bracket on it, so we only needed to use 4000 on the lower bolt. Um, to keep water from leaking inside the bracket. So when I drill the holes in the transom, it's essentially the same as how I drill the holes in the dash. Um, you're dealing with a little bit thicker material. After drilling my holes, I do like to wipe all the coring material with uh, 3M 4000 sealant and then seal the rigging flanges to the transom so you have no water leaking through the rigging flanges. When we engineer out how a rigging tube is going to lay in on the bracket or coming out of the boat, you are drastically reducing the chances of having problems. You break a wiring harness because it wasn't rigged properly, you're dead in the water and you're, hopefully your VHF radio will reach CETO. So we have always prided ourselves in doing the best possible job for the customer. I was excited to see how the boat was gonna run with it originally being a single I.O. boat with a cuddy cabin and the total transformation to being a center console twin engine outboard boat. That boat was way ahead of its time and still is one of the best riding 23 foot boats on the market. And now you put the Armstrong bracket with the flotation, the heavy wide body bracket with a pair of you know efficient 150 Suzuki's on it and it really turned out to be a, a neat project.